welcome back to the Q Factor. We took a little break. Um, we told you we'd be right back. Uh, and we are doing a series on my testimony. We have Miss Sakuya Todd here. And she's going to share with us um, what does a man of God look like? We're in chapter 13. So, um, Miss Todd, uh, you start off with um, God wants us to know that we as women are to respond to um, uh, a man's show of affection and evident of caring and uh, protecting. So you want to talk to us about that, us responding? Yes, in that growing up, even myself, mm -hmm. I did not have the best example of a love relationship in my home. And my parents were married for 53 years. Wow. And that's the case a lot of times. Mm -hmm. There are young men growing up in homes and they never see a man caring for their mother, right. protecting her, giving to her, looking mm -hmm. out for her welfare. They just don't see it. Right. Or a young girl growing up in a home with just a mother, not seeing a man protect her and that interaction of what does a collaboration look like? What does partnership even look like? Right. So God in his divine love for us has left for us this beautiful example of Boaz and Ruth so we won't be ignorant of what a love relationship blossoming looks like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you said something very profound, and I think uh, that may be what's wrong with uh, us, uh, the African American society today, because there are so many um, single parent homes, and they don't see, like you said, the partnership. Uh, uh, you know, the man that the father is not there, so she's not learning how to respond to a man and the different things to do. So, yeah, that's very, very profound. And uh, you used the uh, example of uh, Ruth and Boaz, and you talk about how, uh, um, you know, the type of man that Boaz was, he, he provided for and he showed interest and he, uh, cared for Ruth. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, kind of break down each character and first we're going to talk about uh, the character of Ruth, how she was a, a very, very loyal person. Yes. So you want to talk to us about Ruth? Yes, Ruth had a very loyal uh, relationship with her mother-in-law Naomi mm -hmm. and she said uh, where you go, I'll go and where I'll stay and your God will be my God. Amen. And um, may God deal with me ever so severely if I leave your side. Right. And when you die, I will die. And she was very, very loyal to Naomi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. You also share with us uh, well, it, it, how Ruth was a, an independent woman. Um, she worked uh, and provided uh, for herself and for uh, Naomi. So, would you uh, speak with us about independence? Yes, that is a beautiful uh, attribute of Ruth. Mm -hmm. She was not looking for a man to take care of her. Mm -hmm. She was taking care of herself, an uh, independent lady, mm -hmm. and that she also cared enough to take care of someone else that Lady God put in her life to care for. So, ladies, it's good to take care of yourself, but it's right. also good for us to show care and concern for others. Right. And not be selfish. Amen. Amen. Um, let's see here. So, Ms. Todd has presented us with a question. And that question is, have you overlooked the goodness of the man in your life? Have you thanked him for his kindness? And so, why would you ask us that? Because it's so easy to take someone for granted and mm -hmm. feel entitled. Mm -hmm. And so to keep us thankful, and, and that's what we should be, when someone does a good deed for us mm -hmm. and is kind to us, gets the door, instead of feeling I'm entitled to dinner or I'm entitled to this drink or I'm entitled for you to get in my door to say, Thank you for your kindness. Mm -hmm. To show appreciation, not take a person for granted. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So ladies, be thankful. Show appreciation for his goodness and kindness towards you. 
Amen. Amen. So in um, Ruth, um, second verse, 17th and 8th, uh, second chapter, 17th and 18th verse, it shows us the importance of um, establishing a good relationship with your in-laws. Uh, oftentimes, mother-in-laws don't get the blessings that God has for them because of the nasty ways that they treat their, their uh, daughter-in-laws. And you can, you can in the book, um, you can read that uh, Ruth, second chapter, 17th and 18th verse. But I will say that I am um, I'm guilty of this um, with my uh, granddaughter. My son married a, Af uh, not African American, a uh, white girl. And I was not very fond of, of her. And so consequently, I don't uh, get the pleasure of uh, having my, uh, seeing my granddaughter. Uh, so that's something I'm working on. Uh, but do you want to talk to us about the the uh, goodness of, uh, not the goodness, uh, how important it is to establish a good relationship with your in-laws? Yes, mother-in-laws, definitely. You can um, make or break your relationship with your daughter-in-law because maybe she isn't the one you would chose for your prized possession of your son. Right. But if that's the one he chose, respect his choice. And as much as you can, Put your ego to the side and love her as God's daughter because she's God's daughter as well. And she has it hard enough without a hard relationship with the mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And the blessing of the child, the consequence of not having that relationship is so great mm -hmm. and grand that it's not worth it. Put aside your differences. Uh, think of loving your family and just having that whole family unit in line in love because you know, when you have a it messed up, sometimes you even lose your son because sure. he can choose his wife and his family, his new family, mm -hmm. and the mother-in-law is just bitter somewhere. So as he should, that's biblical, right? Right. And so let's uh, be more inclusive, mm -hmm. and 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 really, if you're inclusive, you can add another person to your family. She could be another source of love and care and, and goodness to you. Y'all could play cards together, read or, mm -hmm. or whatever, instead of uh, sh kind of shying away from her and dismissing her. Right. Because she got your honey, your son. I'm learning. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Miss Naomi. Now, Miss Naomi, she was, uh, she was a, a very, very profound woman. She was a very, very wise woman. And so, would you like to talk to us about um, her wisdom? The wisdom of Naomi was she saw a good man, and she knew a good man in Boaz when she saw him. Mm -hmm. And she was smart enough to tell Ruth to respond to Boaz's goodness Amen. and not let a good one get away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, ladies, if you have someone in your life that, that's uh, elderly, that has wisdom, please listen, because they know, you know, they lived a long life and, and uh, they recognize things that we sometimes don't. And then we talk about Mr. Boaz. Now he was a businessman. I mean, he had a job um, and you uh, point out that he inquired about Ruth. And you also asked us the question, Miss Todd, and that is, how will a man find out, what will a man find out if he asks questions about you? And you tell us how our reputation precedes us. Yes, especially today with internet and sex tapes and uh, new pictures, they precede us. Yes. And so if someone wants to find out about you, will they pull out and say, oh, I saw it in the sex tape? Mm -hmm. And even your employer can uh, search the internet and find your new pictures or your sex tapes. And so ladies, use discretion. Realize that these things can be seen by anyone much later and by eyes you never intended for them to be seen. So use discretion, use honor when you're thinking about putting something on the internet and sharing it with someone. And when you put things on the internet, it's forever. 
So remember that. Um, you also share with us about how um, he, Boaz, protected uh, Booth. And you uh, asked another question of us, and that is, how has your man showed you that he wants what's best for you? God the man protect and provide. So you want to talk to us about that? Yes, I love Boaz's example. In, in case you've never read it and you haven't seen it in your home, what Boaz did was he first told Ruth not to leave his uh, area, his land, where they were uh, picking up the grain mm -hmm. so that she wouldn't be harmed in another field. So his words of protection were, I'm looking out for your best interest. Do these things to stay protected. Sons of God, say things to her that will protect her welfare. Save money. Uh, eat one piece of cake, not two. Um, don't stay out so late you can get harmed out there. Um, walk with friends while you're on your college campus. Whatever will protect her. And then he provided for her when she was parched. He said, drink some water, get you some wine vinegar, get you some bread. You know, he satisfied her basic needs. So his approach to Ruth was for her betterment. He wasn't hitting her, he wasn't choking her, he wasn't calling her out of her name. Man, that is not godly to call her a B or T and all of those bad things. We are daughters of God. Treat us as such, and if you don't know what that looks like, Read Boaz and Ruth to find out what godly men do for God's daughters. Amen. Thank you. And uh, you also tell us that, um, as you spoke said before, uh, he was a, a provider. He met her basic needs. Now, Boaz was a man of uh, honesty, and he was a man of integrity. And then you... you um, question us, the audience, and ask us, will the man in your life do what is right, or does he want what is easy and convenient for him? And I share with you the last serious relationship I had that I think he wanted to do things that was easy and convenient for him. And oftentimes we haven't been taught honesty and being men of integrity mm -hmm. so I'll put that out there uh, sons of God be men of your word if you're going to do something be a person someone can rely on because he's going to do it he's a man of his word his word is his bond yeah. if you don't have your word what do you have Nothing. how can a person trust what you say so if and if you haven't been a man of your word start today be reliable Amen. Amen. And then we talk about Mr. Boaz. Um, he made the woman that he cared for his wife. Boaz didn't wait five years. He didn't wait ten years or three years or whatever. Uh, he didn't waste his, waste his years uh, to settle the matter. He went ahead and he married um, Ruth. So, do you want to talk to us about um, wasting years? Well, I tell you this: Boaz was um, a man who knew what he was looking for. Mm -hmm. He saw Nick Ruth, who was hardworking, caring, and selfless. Right. And he made that woman his wife. She was a marriage material, and he married her. And their life together began, and it's a beautiful story. So I encourage men, if you see a woman who's hardworking, caring, and selfless, make her your wife or someone else will. Amen. And so that's all I have. Uh, I'd like to close with uh, where there is love, there is no doubt. Do you have anything you want to share with us? I just want to say that, ladies, we are raising sons a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And if we want... A solution to the relationship issues we see we must start home devotion we must open up our Bibles with our sons and our daughters and read these stories and because if lives matter they must matter first 
at home to us. Mm -hmm. So get back to reading your Bible with your kid. It starts with you in your house. Amen. Thank you for that, Ms. Todd. Well, we'd like to uh, thank you again for sharing your time with us. That concludes Chapter 13. Uh, next week, we will, we will do uh, Chapter 14. So we'd like for you to come back and uh, join us again as we continue to go through uh, my testimony here. We love you, and again, thank you for sharing your time with us. Goodbye. Bye.